With a soft yet scintillating voice that's accompanied by some stellar cello playing, Gabriel Royal is able to conjure up a downright astounding amount of romanticism with his timeless tunes. And he's about to busk for us tonight. Just as he's done on many a New York City subway platform on this subterranean episode of B-Side. Are you ready for this underground ride? I'm your host, the one and only Johnny Polygon. Now I'm going to need you to keep it locked on B-Side. Are you going to be dead meat? Let's do this. <laughs> So yeah, for transparency, I do know Gabriel from He's lying. From <laughs> from Oklahoma. Nice. Um, music brought us together in high school. Uh, we both ended up in New York as adults. So uh, what inspired you to move from Oklahoma to New York? The two uh, places are Well you've been to Oklahoma, but if the rest of you haven't, <laughs> leave. <laughs> no, no, I I love like, Oklahoma. I I actually I got a lot of great friends there. 
Uh, but music was a lot more in the mix out here. Like, you know, if, if, you if you live in Oklahoma and you're playing on a weekly basis, you're playing towards like tw to the same 30 or 40 people, 10 people, 15 people, maybe 12 people. Okay. Um, so for me, it was a lot more, it was a lot more exciting out here. I got family out here, like my brother's somewhere, he's somewhere, <laughs> he's somewhere here in New York. Um, so I have family out here, I had a lot of friends. Um, and I remember making an album with you, actually, in Green Lantern. Remember that dude? Yeah. Remember that dude? I so do. I flew out here like five times in one year, and they were like, hey, you know we could pay you if we weren't paying for your ticket. So why don't you move here? So I was here like six months later. Nice. Yeah. Why, uh, why cello? Because my brother played violin. My brother... Uh, I wanted, older brother? Yeah, my older brother played violin, and I wanted to harmonize with him. Um, so at the ripe young age of 12, I was like, let me, let me choose something so that we're not in competition. Uh. And so I wanted, to, I wanted to actually play songs with him. So, oh, okay, so you chose it yourself. So I chose the sexier, um, <laughs> more well-rounded, right. a lot more versatility yeah. instrument. Easier to carry. Yeah, right. you know, than he, than he did, so. Yeah. So that's why, yeah, and you know, it's, it's pretty. I like. Yeah. What got you started uh, writing original music for the cello? Uh, for the cello? Yeah. Because I, I wrote music for, I mean, since I was like three years old, singing to the trees in Muskogee, Oklahoma. That's a real story. I wrote my first song. I was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> and then a car drove by, and I remember being old enough to be embarrassed that I was in my underwear, so I ran back inside. <laughs> is this too much? Too much? I, was, I thought I was burying my. This is a comfort tree. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sharing. Yes, I'm trust sharing. bubble. A trust in. bubble. Yes. Um, so that was the first song I ever wrote. But writing for cello, I didn't write my first song until I moved here to New York, and I was busking in the subway, mm. and uh, I was playing Bach cello suites down there. And if anybody plays music, you know how stressful it is if you learn in a classical or a jazz. Well, like, there's a way to do it. There's a certain, like, I was learning Bach, I was learning Beethoven, I was learning Mozart, and it's like, bum, dum, bum, bum. so anytime I played cello for, like, if a rock band asked me to do something or a hip-hop act asked me to do something, I'd get extremely nervous. And so playing in the subway, I was like, I need to learn my cello. I need to, like, breathe through this guy. Like, this is, this is me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I was I was worried about my bow arm. I was worried about bow speed, bow pressure, and all this, all this just different stuff. So I was like, let me write a piece that's just my own, nice. to where nobody can tell me whether I'm not I'm doing it right or wrong. It's just to get comfortable with my bow arm and like. <laughs> so you guys you guys are gonna hear that piece tonight, actually. Okay, um, cool. You have another song for us? I do. Would you guys like another song? Cause, uh, Cause I got one. <laughs> um, this one actually requires a bit of crowd participation. Just snaps. We're talking boom, boom, yeah, boom, 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 just like that. You know that is a lie Baby, you say I'm too clever And I know you're not that shy Baby, you can say it's right When we both know it's wrong Maybe you can stay the night Cause I don't wanna be alone no. You say that I'm easy yeah. 
Just like Sunday morning low Baby, when you try and please me yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. No, I can never get enough No, no, no ooh, 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 ooh. Baby, you can say it's right yeah. ooh, 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 ooh. When we both know it's wrong Maybe you can stay the night ooh, 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 ooh. Cause I don't wanna be alone You say we're for always But that's the day that never comes No, it don't happen very often single that's out right now if anybody wants to look it up on YouTube it's called Say It's Right my name is Gabriel Royal you have a music video to it right? Spotify you okay. know I've never been able to say that before give it up for my my manager out here in the crowd right now this dude this is the dude can I just tell a quick story real quick no quick okay, stories sure. alright yeah, thank, sure. thank you thank you yeah. uh, this dude found me in the subway like uh, hey man did you write that song? the first one I played you uh, Pass the Flowers that's the one he heard yeah. And he was like, yo, uh, you got any more? And I was like, yeah, buddy, I got like a hundred of them. Blah, 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 blah. Are you tipping? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so like a month later after he was like trying to uh, get me to actually take him serious, I give him another like lie. I was like, man, I got meetings tonight after we had set up a meeting. I was like, I've got other meetings. Meanwhile, I was at home like playing video games, just like staring out the window. Um, and I, I ran into him at a bar with my girlfriend at the time, and he looks over at me from the bar, he's like, this is what you're doing? <laughs> like, really, really, really? So you don't have a meeting. So the next day, we went hang out, and he was like, I've got a song that I've, I've written for you. And I was like, oh man, this guy's just trying to get on the album. Oh man, he's just let me be, let me live. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to hit that. Um, but the song that he wrote for me was beautiful. Mm. Next day I went over, so I was like, okay, you have my attention. Now, like a year and a half later, two years, got an album out. I've been to Brazil, um, going to Amsterdam, Rotterdam, possibly Italy in November. So my dude, Beto. Give it up for my dude, Beto. Like, I'm not responsible enough to like make this happen. Yes. So I, I needed someone to cradle me up, carry me to across the finish line. Yes. Not that we done yet, but. It's a very flattering story for Beto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. But speaking of Brazil, uh, what was it like bringing your music to a different country? It was the first time I had been off the North American continent. Oh. Um, and I was, real, I was real nervous. I was like, because I, I went down there with a cello, and like, I don't know, I had a, a, a certain stereotype of Brazilian culture. I just thought they liked, you know, to dance and like get down and and here I come with a cello and a soft voice. So I was intimidated and I kept asking Beto, I was like, yo man, like, are you sure this is cool? Because we were supposed to have a full band and the band fell through. And I was like, man, like, maybe I should just go home. Like maybe you should like put me put me on plane first thing in the morning. Like, I don't know if I can do this. And he was like, he's like, no, I'm just be cool. Just be yeah. cool, they're gonna love it. And so, like, it was like 900 people in the crowd, and you could hear a pin drop. Wow. Like, everybody, and people actually were singing my lyrics. That's never happened to me before. Wow. Like, they had listened to my album before I got there, and people were like, play, play past the flowers. 
And I was like, you know, past the flower. A lot of things make me cry. I don't know if you guys got that general thing. Watching school. Crying and singing at the same time is difficult. But that's what I do on the cello. That's beautiful. my that's my genre. Beautiful. Have you ever heard like that that cry genre? <laughs> That dry cry. That dry cry. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, um, got another song? Yeah. Yeah, man. Nice. You know I do, buddy. Pretend I'm Beto. <laughs> do you have another? <laughs> um, okay. This is actually one that I uh, auditioned uh, for the Tiny Desk competition. Okay. Tiny. You know, like Tiny Desk. Minuscule. Yeah. Tiniest of desks. She keeps making me wait again Yeah, she's making me wait again Girl, I know show so say so and I'll go but she keeps making me wait again yeah she's making me wait Making me wait again. So now I'm making me wait again. And I'll say, anyway, could you please stay? Yeah, just for today. Making me wait again. Nice. Right. Nice. Much like, you know, the hook had Mysterious. Said, you know, I like <laughs> it. Very cryptic. Very cryptic. So. I'll leave a lot of things left. You're black. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yo. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. How do you feel about, uh, are there a lot of African American string players? How do you feel about uh, the diversity in the string community? Well, it's, well, I mean, it's five of us worldwide. <laughs> So, and I know I know the other four. Right, group chat. One yeah. one name is Cremaine. <laughs> no, don't laugh. His name is Cremaine Booker, and he's amazing. No. He's a real. This is a real person. Okay. Shout out to Cremaine. If you Facebook. Um. Uh. No. Well, I. I. You know, I like being unique. Do yeah. I want more diversity? Sure. But I like being one of five people. It's more than five. That was that was just a. It's a joke number, um, a little over five, but uh, I mean, Six. I've never, I've never found um, like I feel like musicians are kind of open-minded, liberal people. Yeah. So I've never like run into black cello 
problems. Like, <laughs> you're not gonna be in our orchestra. You're too black. Like, no, it's, like they're, they're like all my all my professors have been very like open, amazing yeah. uh, people who actually put me on this path. Like, shout out to Mr. Kurtz um, from uh, from Booker T in Oklahoma. Yeah. He's one of the people that made me take music serious. Wow. And uh, you know, I'm talking about like a five foot three German dude. Okay. You know, so he he could have he had all the chance to be uh, unwelcoming, S supportive, un un non supportive, un you know what I'm saying? He yeah. could have not supported me. Yes, but he did, and it and it I mean it got me into I got a scholarship. That's another thing. I got a scholarship from all white people. Nice. At, at the university. Those are the people who get scholarships, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the University of Tulsa was a private school. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying in the in that world I haven't faced any any uh it's it's just been based about skill. So yeah. if you can play the piece, if you got, you know right. if you got enough of I mean the cellos are expensive. Maybe that's a slight class issue, you know, like you gotta invest to get a cello. Yeah. But nowadays eBay exists and like Craigslist. So you got you this cello right here, I don't even want to tell you how expensive it was. <laughs> <laughs> that was cheap. <laughs> You're a teacher too, as well. In I'm the, a teacher. Yeah. In your daylight time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that is that a question? Yeah. What do you teach? I'm a teacher. Yeah. What do you teach? Music. <laughs> I teach music. No, I teach one word answer. <laughs> That's the goal for these interviews. I teach music. I teach. Um, I teach at a couple of schools. I teach in the Bronx right now. And that's okay. uh, the the current class I'm teaching is a hip hop recording studio class, so like kids are writing their own rhymes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like friends can never depend. Right now it was hard to defend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like everybody's on this trap rhythm too. Yeah. So uh, that's a lot of fun. But I usually teach a a, a choir a choir a, a pop choir class. So I have a lot of freedom to tour, travel, and still keep a you know solid. Yeah. Check. Do you have any words of advice for young kids thinking of picking up an instrument? Do it now, immediately. Yeah. The sooner, the sooner you pick it up. Like I'd be if I hadn't started. If I had started before sixth grade, I'd probably. Hmm, this is the loaded <laughs> answer. Okay. Because if I was more technically proficient at the cello, I would probably be in an orchestra. But that's less creative work, I would say. Like the fact that I have an album out that has like my own tunes on it, that's yeah. that's not so normal for classical mu classical musicians. And I'm not taking anything away from the classical world because um, it takes a lot of technique, it takes a lot of training, like hard fought dedication. Um, but one of the things they don't really practice creativity, and that's one of the things that I've gotten because I, I came up in the pop music world um, and the classical world. So I was listening to, to Biggie and Tupac and and Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Burt Bacharach. So I was yeah. listening to, I was, did y'all hear that? Did anybody notice how weird that? <laughs> Burt Bacharach, let's go backwards. Burt Bacharach, <laughs> Stevie Wonder, the Tupac. Ag um, aggressive, really aggressive. <laughs> so, so I really, I had like, my, my father was a musician and he had a very like vast, CD tape collection. Yeah. At the, when, back when I was a boy, you know, we used to listen to cassette tapes. Cassette tapes. <laughs> um, so his 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 library gave me like you know I was listening to Black Sabbath, to like Earth Wind and Fire, to Led Zeppelin, to Richie. Your dad ha listened to Richie, Black Sabbath. My brother brought okay. Black Sabbath in the. My brother <laughs> brought, brought brought. <laughs> brought <laughs> Brought a uh, black Sabbath to the house, along with Lenny Kravitz. Like my brother was like a huge rocker. Cool. Um, so, uh, what were we talking about? The next song. Awesomely <laughs> played. Well played, Johnny. What's well the next played. song called? Uh, this next one's called "When You Came Around." Okay. Um, and it was about waking up. Um. Yesterday 
Yes, we watch the sun come up. And we watch the moon, it fell down, down, down. And I watch my love erupt. When you, when you came around. We don't like these type of things, no, no. Because of all the joy it brings, yeah. Baby, don't be mad at me, uh-huh, cause it happened easily, yeah, yeah. Yes, we watch the sun come up, and we watch the moon, it fell down, 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 and I watch my love. When you, when you came around, we don't like these type of days, no, no. It's so fresh and so amazing, yeah. Baby, don't be mad at me, uh huh, cause it happened easily, yeah. Yes, we watch the sun come up. And we watch the moon, it fell down. Oh, oh. and I watch my love erupt. When you, when you came around, and it hardly matters to me, cause I'm right here at home. Tell me that we're better, better off being alone. Cause I'm going to take the time to, yeah, we'll watch the sunrise come back. Because I'm going to be here, baby, I'm going to be here. Yes, to watch the sun come up. And we watch the moon, it fell. And I was my love erupt when you, when you came around. Ooh, 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 That was when you came, what, which one was that? When you came around. When you came around. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. It's about waking up. Yeah. After doing it. <laughs> oh. Oh, nice. hey, you know. Beautiful, I'm beautiful. I had my own meaning to it, but. Oh, uh, well, that works too. I'm gonna ask you some personal questions now if you're ready. Oh, man. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get to know you a little bit. You're stranded on Karaoke Island. Okay, all right, okay. all right. <laughs> you have three songs. Mm, ooh, ooh. To carry with you to three, the, three to your end of days. Cause I got the first one. I don't know about the next two. Cause what? Give me the first one. My mind's telling me no, <laughs> but my body, my body telling me yes. In R. Kelly. Ro Ro Kelly. Oh, R. Kelly. Okay. R. Kelly. Gotcha. Uh, bump and grind. R. Kelly. Bump and grind. If you are unfamiliar with the song. Gotcha. It's a masterpiece. Yes. Number two, now if I gotta go number two, okay. I don't have to go number two, but you, y'all know what I'm saying. Um, you set that up yourself. I'm gonna go Whitney Houston. I have nothing, nothing, nothing if I don't have you. <laughs> Do you know the names of any of these songs? Or you I have, that's it's called I Have Nothing. Oh, okay. Whitney gotcha. Houston, come gotcha. on, it's in the title, okay, man, right, come right, on. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, and third one? Ooh, ooh, now that's a problem. I mean, I'll tell you the the one I go to most, like the first one that pump, popped in my head, mm -hmm. Weezer. 
Um, Say it so. ain't so. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> My okay. love is a heartbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You, you asked me about karaoke. I get deep. Yeah, yeah, if anybody, yeah, yeah. can I tell you a quick story about karaoke? Why I asked. Okay, because yeah. you knew how, you knew I was gonna take it. So I played South by Southwest this um, this uh, March. Another amazing thing my manager Beto did yet again. Um, and so the night before, he was like, "Hey, bro, take it easy. It's like, don't go out. It's like you're gonna have a good night. Okay, we're gonna wake up early. We do some push-ups." Sit ups, we're gonna go jogging. He didn't say that, but we never do that. But but he was like, just be be easy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, great. You know, I'm not gonna do any crazy things, not gonna go to any wild parties. So my friends were like, yo, let's just go do some karaoke. So I was like, perfect, a family activity. <laughs> we're able to bring like, you know, a bottle, you know, have some drinks. I scream sang for three hours straight. And I literally, that night I started out with, I have nothing from Whitney yeah. Houston. I was like, I have nothing! <laughs> so I woke up the next day with absolutely no voice. Wow. Like I, and when I wake up after like partying, and I know I have a show, the first thing I do is like, I go, ooh, ooh. If I can hit those notes, I know I'm, I know I'm like, I'm like, okay, I can like maybe have a drink or something and fix it up. But I woke up and I was like, ooh. <laughs> he called me. And I didn't pick up. I was like, I can't, I cannot like talk to him about it. My voice didn't come back to 30 minutes before I got on stage, and that was 11:30 p.m. So like, I avoided this dude. So to all the, show? All, I killed, crushed it, crushed it, crushed it. murder. murder. <laughs> like it was a great, it was a great show. But I was, I was sweating bullets. Cause when he got there, he was like, "How you doing, brother? It's time for the show." Oh, and I was like, "Man, I'm, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing good." But a mixture of black tea, whiskey, and a 65-year-old grandmother rubbing me on the back, like, "It's gonna be okay, baby." Where'd she come from? <laughs> she came. She was back. She was like in the back room, like just making sure everybody was good. What? And she looked. She looked. She just looked at me like one look. She was like, "He needs some backup. He, he, <laughs> he needs boring. help. This yeah. dude. This dude is not okay." So yeah. she was like, "She was like, okay. So where are you coming from?" She was like, "I'm gonna get you some tea." I had the whiskey. She got me the tea, <laughs> and with all these motherly and whiskey powers combined, I somehow made the show. Karaoke, don't do it before an important gig. Is all, that's a warning, <laughs> <laughs> warning to all the Moral musicians story. out there. Like, karaoke is a variable that you do not need in your in your world. This guy loves karaoke. I do, I do. If you anybody wants everything. to go karaoke after this, I am so down. <laughs> Even though you have other things to do. Yeah, but <clears throat> come on. Yeah, so uh, another thing you're really passionate about is um, food, the specifically <laughs> the consumption. <laughs> Of it, I've I've known this guy for a long time. He kind of his memories are kind of in the form of meals and food. Um, are you just gonna put my business all over <laughs> like this, Johnny? I want them you to know you how I know you. That's all. That's all. Do you have a Do you have a favorite? Let, let's wrap it in the music. I'm done. Okay. Sorry. Do you have a favorite meal that was accompanied with a tour or a show, and that you could tie in together? set me up um, well mm. when we went on tour together in 2013 okay my most memorable meal from that tour you say it at the same time <laughs> three two one <laughs> chicken wings <laughs> okay. 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 No. We, had, we, had <laughs> we had we had some jerk chicken wings oh that's right behind in the, Chicago in Chicago yeah. you remember she you was there Shelly was there mm. and like each day like like we stayed there for like three days because we had the RV, and like every time it was time to eat, like I don't know if I've ever eaten vitamin chicken wing <laughs> three days consecutively. Where it's like, you know what? In breakfast, I'm probably gonna eat these leftover cold chicken wings, and then like dinner, I'm probably gonna get some some hot warm chicken wings, <laughs> and then you know I'm probably gonna set those out, let those just marinate till morning for <laughs> breakfast. I ate, I ate like about 50 chicken wings. <laughs> like, yeah. This is not an exaggeration, because they had 20, remember they had the, the box of 20? For like yes, $10? I do. Anyway, no, we're I don't, going too deep, maybe yeah. it's getting too personal. But I do love chicken wings, that was, that's probably, but we toured, 
we we toured the whole country and they started calling me steak money <laughs> because I had had a little savings. I don't have steak money, but on this tour, like everywhere we went, like if it was like a $15 steak, I was like, I got this. Give me your best ribeye. Bone out. $15 steak, that's a cheap steak. It was in Kansas City. I oh, remember right. exactly. <laughs> I remember exactly where it was. I do remember things in food. Like, I don't remember who played the last Super Bowl, but yeah. I remember that I made mac and cheese and wings. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, things don't. It's a beautiful thing. It's like music, food, uh, kind of. Well, I, I'm trying to do this like the, the, the skinny dudes food critic website. <laughs> Because okay. I eat a lot. I eat a lot, but, you know, I just, yeah. I, I'm just i a snacker. Get into snacking. Guys, get into snacking. If you're not into <laughs> snacking, just, like, get into snacking. It's horrible advice for anyone with a slow metabolism. <laughs> but if, the more you snack, the more you snack. Oh, you build up that metabolism no, by the, snacking? If you eat little portions, it speeds up your metabolism. If you only eat one big meal a day, you hold on to it. Somebody back me up on this. Do I have any <laughs> nutritionists, or am I lying? I might be lying. I might be lying. Okay. Next song. Hey! hey all right. <laughs> what a segue. I'm working on my transitions, all right? What's the next song called? Um, Vitamin Chicken Wing? Um, <laughs> I should write a song for it. Vitamin Jerk. The chicken, the chicken wing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip the one that, that was on this uh, playlist because I got one that I think is a little. Let me check with the control room, see if that's okay. Is that okay? I was joking. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> this is called G Major Suite. But just before I get started, every song has been in G Major, and a suite is usually a collection of tunes that go into one key. So actually, you guys have listened to the G Major Suite. But this is like the, the lead song on my on my album. So if you want to hear the beginning of the G major suite, this this be that tune. My G's. <laughs> my my G majors. <laughs> been a long time to find you. Now that I got you right here, tell me you love me like I do. Let's just make one thing this clear. Thank you. 
gonna be young in the days when the spring is sprung for these are the times of our life behold with the seeing eye oh, oh, oh. So uh, where can we catch you next in New York? We want to see you perform live. Uh, <laughs> Is there something happening soon? Or? Uh, the Bowery Electric tonight, right after this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing after this? Let's go to the Bowery Electric. Yeah, it's one hour. Let's no, really, it. like the Bowery Electric, like in, at 10 o'clock. So. Okay. So if you Anything like. after that? The uh, after that, I'm playing August 5th at the Blue Note. So if anybody wants to see some fancy, Ooh. see me in a fancier situation. I might have a tie on. Ooh. Uh, what? I might have showered. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a, a really uh, really big gig for me. Nice, nice. Um, so anybody that wants to come support is midnight 30 okay. on August 5th. Where can people keep up with you on the internet? On the interwebs, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud. Saw Gabriel Royal. Oh, Gabriel Royal and um, Spotify. Is, if you want to listen to the album, that's like the major place to go. Spotify, iTunes, but um, I like Spotify. Shout outs to Spotify. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I know a little. It's a mixed crowd about what people think about Spotify, but they've only they've only shown me love and like you know I'm getting like a little little side check, little passive income every once in a while um, when those pennies add up. So you like them because they're paying you. I like them because they're paying me. <laughs> and I like their little... Their logo? Yeah, I like nice. their logo. Specifically, <laughs> yeah. Thumbnail. Thumbnail. Um, so what was yeah. it like uh, creating your, your album? This is your first album, right? Uh, you guys have my picture up. I drew that picture. My album covers. That's, that's, I drew that. Oh, okay. Was there anyone that just <laughs> encouraged you, say, I don't know, since the 90s or something to create an album? Hmm close friend or anything I've like had that? friends that in, in influenced me to make album. I can't think of any of them at in present. In particular? Oh. Why, why, why are you asking, John? I'm, why I'm just looking at the notes. You no, know, guys, Johnny bothered me for years. Yeah. This guy right here, aside from Beto, he was long before you, like, man, why don't you have any albums? Because this dude has, like, a million albums out. And they're it's not all, about me. They're all amazing. No, <laughs> true, now, let's true. just, let's Check just me out give, online, give, your host a little, <laughs> give your host true. a little credit. He's got, like, a lot of amazing stuff Johnny Polly got online. And this is, we didn't even plan this. We hate giving each other compliments. So the fact, <laughs> the fact that he's interviewing me right now, I feel very awkward. It's pretty strange. I feel this is very, <laughs> this is very strange yeah. to hear you saying so many amazing things about me. No. <laughs> I didn't write but, this stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Um, but no, really, 
Uh, he he encouraged me for years. It's like make an album. Like we need it. People want it. Like everybody asks me, why doesn't Gabe have an album out? So I also you know put you right up there. Thanks Was for, it as thanks painful? For, thanks for shaming me into making an album. Sometimes you gotta do it as a bro. <laughs> you, know I mean? you gotta shame your homies into being great. <laughs> that's that's exactly what happened. He's, I like I felt stupid coming around him without an album. So when then when I finally got him, I was like, I got an album now, Johnny. I was like, awesome. Let me take you out to dinner yeah. to celebrate my album. So awkward dinner as well. Yeah. Not used to you paying for things. <laughs> He's like, you want another bottle of wine? I'm like, uh, <laughs> am I paying for this wine or what? But yeah, yeah. Was it was it an interesting process taking? Because it's mostly songs that you've been playing in the subways, correct? On your on your. I record. wrote okay. So pass the flowers, the first tune that you guys heard. I, I actually I had never I had never sang and played cello at the same time. And so like one day I was just like this is when I I'm about to play the next track I'm about to play for you guys is the one the first one I wrote. Um, but out of that one came I was just like plucking around and thing. And I was like, ooh that's pretty. I was like I wonder if I can sing to that. So I was like Foo -doo -dee. So I, I didn't even have the lyrics to it. It was I, I write melodically as opposed to lyrical based. So I'll come up with a melody and then I'll add words to that. Everybody writes differently, but for me, particularly, I mean I write three different ways. Sometimes it's a concept, sometimes it's a melody, and sometimes it's I ha I'll have the chords first and then I'll write to the chords. Okay. Um, and past the flowers was definitely the chord progression first. Then I wrote a melody to that, and then I fit the lyrics into, into that. Nice. Um, so, I the the whole album was pretty much written in the subway, uh, because I was I was just down there practicing and playing every day, and I had time to like just make stuff up and and yeah. and come up with, you know. Including the next song. Including okay, so this next song, the story behind this. See. Um, See. Sweet. It's called On Again, Off Again, Friend. And uh, this was the song that I was like, I got to just like stop thinking about where, where my shoulders should be and how long my bow and my bow pressure, bow speed. I was like, let me just get that out of my mind and just like jam out on something. So I came up with this, this theme that was like. That was it. That was the first thing I did. And like I would just like jam that for hours and then I added a little bit more to it. A little bit more, a little bit more. Next thing you know, it was a song and it literally it changed my my playing technique cuz like i was if i got nervous like you could hear it in my like in my bow arm Ooh. and i'm like i don't even want to do that right now cuz it'll give me muscle memory and i was getting nervous but <laughs> let's forget that but <laughs> but so i did a part then added a part and next thing you know it was a full song and i would use that to warm up with any gig and it would relax me and uh, it's it's that was the first thing that I did, and then the rest of, like, the whole album has come since then. Beautiful. Let's hear it. What's it called again? On Again, Off Again, Friend. <laughs> Bum 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 b
So I give a call and she lets it just ring. Yes, we've been caught up by such trivial things. Tell me you love me so that I can pretend she's my on again, off again friend. Yes, we had a love. She's my on again, off again friend. Yes, we had a love that we've yet to discover. That's my on again, off again friend. So I listen closely to all of the lies. If she really needs me, then why won't she try? Say that you want me so that I can pretend in my on again, off again, friend. Yes, we had a love unlike any other. That's my on again, off again, friend. Yes, we had a love that we've yet to discover. That's my on again, off again, friend. So I come on over and knock on her door. She says she loves me, but wants so much more. Say that she needs me so that I can depend on my own again, off again, friend. Yeah, that's my own again, off again, friend. Favorite thing about playing in the subway? Ooh, the smell. Least favorite thing? Ooh, the people. Would you play for Trump? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, I'd play for Trump. What of it? Come at me, bro. Come at me. We were well, doing so well. I mean, if, if, well, look, 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 look. I mean, I, do I think he's a despicable person? Yes. Okay? Do I think a lot of people are despicable that I've performed for? I don't know. <laughs> he's just more out there than most of the people. I mean, I played at Oklahoma weddings, bro. Like, you love weddings. Love weddings. Book love this guy for your wedding. He's great. Anybody getting married, holler at your boy, you know, because I say, I will swoon the both of you. Well, you don't do background fight. checks or anything. You'll yeah. play for Trump. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I mean, like, look, I, I, I find that that's a hard thing. Like, this, maybe my soft, melodious tones might soften his hard, raisinish, calcified heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like anybody deserves... Raisinish. Yeah. Just visualize it. Um, his heart <laughs> looks like a brain, is what I'm saying. Um... <laughs> So I, I would I would never not play for anybody unless, well that's that's oh man this is deep I mean we got how much time do we have because I could we're actually out of time <laughs> really <laughs> really <laughs> well 
Now we see what singing and playing music for your entire life affords you. And that's an undeniable amount of talent. I hope you enjoyed the smooth croons of Gabriel Royal. But as a result, please don't get all overly emo out here in these streets. And keep your composure, people. And if you want to keep hearing more B-Side, that is, check out our YouTube channel, hashtag BSideBK, and our podcast on SoundCloud.com slash BSidePodcast. I'm your host, Johnny Polygon, and this has been a decent pleasure. <laughs> I've had the time of my life. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks you guys for having me.